はい。はい、my,、uh, my name is o i n d r i l a and、uh, I'm here to tell you about programmatic advertising. So, how does programmatic ad look like? I have made a snapshot for you to refer to. So, here, the one that you see here, it's a programmatic ad. These are all our programmatic ads. They appear on your websites. You might have already seen it in your day to day life because you,、uh, uh, when you browse、uh, from one website to another, you always see programmatic ads.、Um, now, programmatic ads appear on ad spaces. Which is called inventory. And it will look something like this. So it will look something like this on your tablet. It will look something like this on your desktop. It will look something like this on your mobile phone. Now, why is it called programmatic? When I initially when I started、uh, learning programmatic, I was like, I was, I was really confused. I wanted to know exactly what programmatic is. is it in, does it involve programs? Does, does it involve Java, C, and so on?、Um, you see, I'm kind of terrified about、uh, writing code. So I really didn't want to get into a, a, in an industry where I have to write codes because I'm literally. Terrified of writing codes. So I was like, oh, programmatic, that means do I have to write codes again?、Uh, well, not exactly. If you're a digital marketing expert, you don't have to write codes. But why is it again called programmatic advertising? So this ad space, or this is,、uh, like I said, is called inventory or media space where ads appear. Uh, is automatically sold and bought、uh, in a marketplace. And this entire process of buying and selling of online advertisement is called programmatic. Think it in this、uh, think it of、uh, a shopping mall. Let's say、uh, that you have a shopping mall where it is owned by one specific owner. And、uh, there are around uh, uh, 50 shops. Every second, those 50 shops are being owned by, are, are being rented by a couple of, uh, uh, by million of advertisers. Advertisers, I will talk about advertisers, millions of business people who show their,、uh, who showcase their product and services. And consumers are buying from it. And those shops is, Uh, keeps changing its owner. Uh, 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 so there are some, sometimes, let's say Reebok is showing its ad, sometimes, let's say Adidas is showing its ad. So it keeps changing. I'll give you one example. So here, an advertiser totally tubular has,、uh, wants to sell more surfboards. So what it does is it, it goes through a programmatic advertising platform. It targets its audiences, and how does this audience look like? This audience is mainly composed of a male or female who is 18 to 45 years old, who is 33 minutes from the beach, who loves surfing, salt water, and California, and is in California, consumes surfing content on the lunch break, and uh, uh, surfs around the 7 to 10 p.m. On Of the time and loves weather, sunny weather and、uh, browses through smartphones. So, these, this is a one set of online consumer,、uh, which is a potential customer for our total tubular. Now, what the platform does is the platform will seek out these specific set of audiences and will show the ads to them. Now, there are millions of people out there who would. Who would, uh, uh, who would uh, match one of these criteria, not all of these criteria. So the, pl the, the platform takes its time to understand the audiences and then at real time shows them the ad exactly around when they're、uh, surfing for that content. Now, advertisements are personalized based on each customer unique interest and behavior. So Um, I might not like surfing, but I love,、uh, 
I love sea. I would rather have a tan than do surfing. So I wouldn't be shown a totally tubular ad. I will be shown probably a Neutrogena ad, a Neutrogena sunscreen ad, because that would make more sense to me. Uh, the platform will decide based on that and shows the ad exactly what you want to see. Now, I have added one life cycle so that it makes, to make it more like you can read, literally visualize how it works. So let's start from here. Consumer is browsing the internet. When the consumer starts browsing the internet, what happens? Uh, it goes to a site, let's say, let's say the Hindu. When the uh, uh, when the surfer or who is whoever is surfing, uh, who loves surfing, is surfing the internet. Wow, love the pun. So, is surfing the internet. What happens is publisher sends dimensions of ad spaces to SSP. I will tell you what SSP is. I will tell you who are, who are publishers. Do not get freaked out. It's just an example of uh, and there is a set, separate entity called publishers who owns the website. And uh, there's a separate entity called an advertiser who are the basically the business people who are, uh, who are selling their products and services. So publishers send the dimensions of this ad spaces to SSP. Now, SSP is a platform owned by publishers. Publish SSP reads the user cookies in most to serve the most relevant ad. Then it connects to the ad exchanges to get the best fit of an advertiser. Ad exchanges then connects to a DSP who values impression. Then totally tubular has not set up in an SSP and becomes a match where the targeting matches the user interest and bid in the highest. SSP picks a winning bid then add a serve to the consumers. Why should you add a programmatic? There are millions of websites. I always, I, I'm literally biased about programmatic advertising because I've seen it uh, being adopted by many big brands. And they do that because they know that this has a wide reach than Facebook, than any other social media network any other search engine because um, search engine is just one place. Social network is just one place. But this one, it's like you're going everywhere and you see an ad. You go down, you go downstairs, you open your gate, you see an ad. You go outside, you're walking the walkway, you see an ad. You go to the market, you see an ad. You go to your office, you see an ad. It's something like this. So it's, you can understand that programmatic is really effective. But again, you would have a question. Exactly my point, Andrew, I really don't want to see ads everywhere. Now, this is just an example, hypothetical example, where I show you ads wherever you go, but I will not bombard you with ads. It's one of the practices that should be, uh, should, that should be used by most of the mar digital marketers or uh, the campaign managers, which they fail to do. And that's really a bad uh, practice, uh, like I said. So yeah, show your ads in a moderate uh, uh, amount or which we call as frequency. We will learn about it in, frequent sli in, in future slides. So uh, your ads, when you show them in separate platforms and separate uh, uh, in separate uh, uh, you know, channels and uh, you also see it in different webs uh, in your different devices. So let's say you see the ad on your desktop, you, you might also see the ad on your mobile, or you might also see the ad on your tablet. So how how does programmatic take care of everything? How does it make sure that your ad is relevant, reaches to the right user at the same time, at the right time, and across the devices? How does this do? How how is it even possible? Now, programmatic advertising follows an algorithm. It is an algorithm-based um, technology. Okay, it's a way of showing a market. It's, it's a type of marketing. It's a type of digital marketing, which programmatic uh, 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 uses to show ads to your audiences. Now, I will talk about how it does and what's the what's the technicality of it and how it works out. Don't worry, I will not talk about coding. I will just talk about exactly who are involved and how exactly it works. But you have to wait for that. 
Now, what are the advantages of programmatic advertising? There are four, four major uh, advan advantages of programmatic advertising. First is reach, like I said, you have millions of websites, so you can reach so different websites, different, uh, uh, different places and different channels. And why, how does it happen? Again, technicality is coming up. Uh, types of ads, there are different type of ads in um, programmatic. You might have seen, ad, I, on the first slide, I showed you some ads. There was something moving, animation kind of thing. And there, is, uh, there were different products in one ad. So there, they are called dynamic ad. And the one that was moving was, it's called uh, interactive HTML5 ad. You can make HTML5 ad more interactive, like sometimes you might have seen an ad is asking you to do some action, take some action, like say, spin the wheel or uh, scratch, a, a scratch the specific portion which is blurred out. So that's one of the interaction and uh, that use uh, ads want users to take and it becomes really interesting. Now. Apart from that, there are other ads as well, which is like video ad. You might have seen ads in um, uh, on YouTube channel on uh, specific websites, and those are all coming from programmatic. Now, there is one more thing that you have. You might note that some programmatic uh, channels also promote OTT. Now, what are, what is OTT? OTT. Uh, you might know about Netflix and Hotstar and stuff. So you will see ads up there sometimes if you are working with a very high ad, highly advanced um, dsp that's a programmatic platform where you can run if you're an advertiser you can run ads then it supports ODT as well now uh, apart from these ads there are some uh, something called native ads which is which look exactly at the website content we'll talk about ads in details in, in future slides but this is one way of understanding that there are so many ads so many different type of ads which really engages users and which is only available in programmatic targeting options now you have to understand the targeting options in programmatic works in a different manner than in search or in social uh in Targeting options in programmatic is more like it generates user based on user's uh, information. So uh, the way you you show your interest is recorded in internet and is recorded by your browser with the specific uh, specific option called cookie. And from there, we understand what exactly do you want. So for example, let's say now, there are a lot of people who think that cookie is not a good thing. We will talk about it again in details, but just a background, cookie is not always a bad thing. So for example, let's say uh, you had been looking out for um, for a range of lipsticks. Now, um, based on your, your behavior, I, uh, I'm i a campaign manager, show you the latest L'Oreal lipsticks, which you didn't know about. And that made you made your decisions more refined, and you would you now know that this particular range of lipsticks of L'Oreal is really nice. It has rich texture and everything, and you can go ahead and buy it. Now, if I don't know about it, if I show you, uh, let's say, um, a pair of sandals instead of a lipstick, probably that's not really something that you would be interested in. So that's not really helpful. So that's why uh, cookies are very important and programmatic takes it from that and uh, based on how, what you would be interested in if you are a consumer. Speed, cost, efficiency, it's something like this. Imagine a market where there are millions and millions of advertisers, everyone is pitching for one specific ad species and whoever bids highest shows the ad. So that's why um, but would you would that mean that one ad space will cost like billions? No, it's not like that. It's it's very cost effective. It it will be as low as you know one fourth of a dollar. Now it depends on the marketplace. In Indian market, I have seen uh, people buying ad spaces at thirty rupees, as low as thirty rupees for thousand impressions. We will talk about impressions and everything. But as of now, understand that impressions means if your ad shows thousand times, you pay thirty rupees. So it's that cheap. 
Uh, so based on that, so you, you understand you reaching a huge set of audiences and you show thousand impressions, thousand times an ad for 30 rupees, that's dead cheap. Okay, so these are the advantages and it's, it happens very fast. So you know, if you go to a website, you see an ad and it comes really that fast and then you change it and then again, another ad which you might like would pop up. So that's speed and cost efficiency. Now, you might have a question like, when I'm browsing, I see some ads which I really don't want to see and uh, I really don't I have no way interest, uh, not a single, I don't have an iota of interest in, I don't want to see the ad in the, the most important thing. Well, the thing is, you have to understand, programmatic advertising is being run by many campaign managers out there and they might have set your audiences wrong. If your audience is the basic audience is set wrong, that even an algorithm cannot make it right. So for example, let's say I, let's take up uh, this advertiser, totally tubular. So if this person just targets demographic geography behavior, okay, it wouldn't make really make sense. I might not be interested in surfing. I might not be interested in going to the beach, I am still a male uh, or I might be still a female of 18 to 45 years uh, uh, of demographic of within 18 to 45. I might still be staying three minutes from the beach. I might still be browsing at 7 to 10 p.m. I might still be in a very sunny weather and I, am, I might still be using my device. Now, where did I miss? I missed one single point that's interest. Okay, now let's think of something else. Let's say I I um, miss out on the demographic part. Now, I'm going to show to every random people. Now, you don't really know whether, whether a 10 year old would want to serve. No, whether a, a 70 year old person might want to serve, no. So you have to understand that targeting is very, very important and most of the marketers miss out on that. If your audience is not set right, no matter how many programmatic advertising campaign you run, it will not perform. So if you have already worked on programmatic and it did not perform, you might want to check your audience once again. Okay, so let's go forward. Like I said, programmatic is very advantageous. Uh, it has its own advantages and it's been a huge market. In US specifically, uh, we have seen an adoption of programmatic year over year. So from 2015 to 2019, it has gone up from $17.5 billion business to $45.72 billion business. It means that the industry have grown more than two and a half times over just four years. Okay. Now, if that's the case, then what's the secret to the success of programmatic? Remember, programmatic is a technology. We call it as ad tech. Any platform who is making, who is contributing to programmatic is an ad tech company. Now, what they do is an ad tech is an algorithm. It's a machine learning algorithm which uh, analyzes campaign and user behavior. So it optimizes real time. Now I will give you one example. So for example, let's say you are not near the beach. You are in a mall. Yeah. Now when you're in a mall and at that time you might be interested in buying a pair of shoes you had been searching for a pair of shoes and want to tally it with the with the with the prices that's there in the mall so you want to see okay you go to uh let's say centro and you want to see whether or, or let's say clarks you you wanted to see whether the prices in uh on the website is cheaper than the prices on this in the store if it's cheaper you had rather buy it from the store uh from the website rather than from the store so now what happens when you are searching for the uh, for the shoe prices while you are in the store? Um, you start getting ads 
based on that. So in real time, it understands what you're really looking at. And at that specific moment, you see an ad. And uh, the probability of your campaign success is higher because you understand the user's interest. You understand what they're specifically looking for. You show the ad exactly around the same time. And that's why it is, it is a huge uh, success in terms of advertising. Now we are in 2020. I have been talking about the, the programmatic trends in the past seven years. Now, what is on the rise? Artificial intelligence. I was talking about machine learning. It is becoming more and more advanced because you have to understand one thing is consumer journey is becoming more complicated than ever. Earlier, our, our consumer journey used to be very easy. You go to a shop, buy a thing. Now, why is it so complicated now, nowadays? It's complicated because user has, uh, has been researching a lot before buying. They, do, uh, they go to the internet, go from one sub website to another to understand the advantages and disadvantages. And then just like how you have come here to understand what are the different advantages of programmatic. Similarly, uh, for any product or any services, user do, does a thorough research before buying. So that's why consumer journey is very complicated. Now, GDPR benefits, apart from that, like we have a uh, top 12 pro, uh, uh, advertising trends, which is same happening in 2020. I have a specific uh, video just on these uh, 12 topics because it's like more elaborate topic. As of now, I can just go through one one after the other. GDPR benefits, you know about GDPR. GDPR is, uh, is a protective law to safeguard uh, uh, a user's data. Yeah. Um, DOH and mobile location data, it is making user real-time data more easy to capture. Voice activated ads, after Alexa and uh, uh, after the invention of Alexa and the other voice generated apps, uh, voice activated ads has also become a, uh, one of the uh, latest trend for ad decks, wearables, F5G in programmatic advertising, evolution of personalization, blockchain and ads or DXT. Programmatic TV, podcast, audio ads, omnichannel programmatic, outcome-based pay for uh, agencies and in-house in and uh, versus agency. Okay, so we will cover that uh, in a while. Now, some of you might have already run display network advertising in Google Ads and you will be like, I know about this. I have run display and ad network advertising in AdWords. It's just the same. Then why are, even am I talking about programmatic? It's, it's something different. Okay, so yeah. So what's the difference? They're not the same. Okay. What you do in Google Display Network is you set a display campaign, and uh, you set a display campaign means you are an advertiser, and you go to AdWords. You uh, you show it to a specific publisher to uh, reach out to the specific audiences. It's kind of very direct media buying. So there, are, um, then you would be like, okay, why do I have to go through the complexity of programmatic where there is an ad server, agency, training desk, data management platform, DSP, ad exchanges, and so on. You have to understand that programmatic is a way of reaching out to millions and millions of users and that happens based on like i will give you one example so for example let's say um it's just like this you have a uh, you have a tank let's say a water tank okay now a water tank and there's a pipe and that is connected to your tap. When you open the tap, the water comes from the tap. That's not a big deal. And that's 3DM. What's programmatic then? Programmatic is, imagine that you have five different tanks. All these five different tanks has five different 
liquids in it, not only water. So one has milk, one has oil, one has, uh, let's say, juice, wine, or uh, let's make it more interesting. One has uh, water, the other one has beer, let's say, yeah. And you are the user end and you want to open the tab and you want to get water, milk, uh, then oil or uh, or wine around different different times. So when you are chilling out, you want to have beer. You want to open the tap and it should come out as beer. So that's programming. Okay. So you definitely get water out of it, but you get other stuff as well. So you have option of getting all the other things when according to real time. So based on whatever your mood is at real time. Okay. Now, GDN covers 70% of the web space. DSP covers 95% of the web space. Now you would be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good with 70%. So if you're good with water, if you're like, I don't want the other stuff, I can just manage just fine, then programmatic is not for you. You can just stop right now. But if you want really good quality inventory and you want 95% of it, uh, then programmatic is the best option for you to run. You have other differences between uh, uh, between programmatic and GDN. As you see here, you have multiple ad exchanges and inventories in programmatic. But here you don't have that. You have only Google ad exchange. Now at this point, you wouldn't understand what is an ad exchange and what are the like the jargons like real time bidding and direct and stuff i had rather come here once we are completely done with the entire course so we will do that so you can take just a glimpse of it and and yeah so we will come back to the slide once we are done with the entire program Okay, now you have might have a question like these are all worldwide numbers and why I am in I want to run a programmatic campaign in India. Why what's the scope of programmatic in India? If it's so good, then why didn't we hear about it? Exactly. Why didn't we hear about it? It's all about awareness. We didn't hear about it because people are not aware of this uh, advertising and because it has the very complex ecosystem uh, uh, it takes time for agencies to adapt it that's one second the platform that you want to run the campaign on it is expensive so most of the agencies do not have the capacity to buy the platform and run campaigns in it so one is awareness second it's cost uh, it's costly, it's expensive for an agency or for a company. So they had rather buy a, uh, do a Google ad, AdWords campaign. So 85 of the digital money is currently purchasing directly. Reports expect programmatic to contribute to a quarter of all the digital media in, in India by 2020. Like I said, awareness and it's expensive. As the global trends, uh, programmatic is positive. India market is expanded to follow the trend. Now, globally, it has been adopted a lot, but in Indian market, it's not. But I wouldn't say that programmatic is expensive overall. Yeah, the very good quality programmatic platforms are like DV360. You need to buy a seat, which would cost you at least two lakhs per month. Um, but if you are able to go to buy a platform uh, of two lakhs per month, then that should not be a problem. But let's say someone is like, doesn't have the money or like just a platform fee of two lakhs. And upon that, you have to add an advertising budget. That's too much for you, right? So you still have options. There are really, really good quality, a, a good inventory, good space and good algorithm based uh, programmatic campaigns, uh, programmatic platforms, which I will discuss in, in later slides, in later uh, um, modules. So yeah, so adaptation is some, some major problem. 
enterprise aspiration and market as in indian enterprises also cater to global clients the standardization is expected to perlocate for indian acting ecosystem as well privacy privacy regulations are guiding the recent development of the market it can prove be deterrence till economic ecosystem adapts to changing needs and that's it thank you so much